Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Reseller Life. My name is John. Uh, I am a full-time reseller. I sell all of my online sales on eBay and other items locally. So, uh, today what I got for you is uh, some of the items that I've sold in the last couple of days. Uh, I kind of mm, picked out a few that kind of just caught my attention more than others. These are not all of my sales in the last uh, few days. This is just a portion of them. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, first thing we got here is a vintage 90 snapback hat. Snipback hat. Forgot the O on that one. Uh, but I don't think it affected the sale at all. Um, it had a, enough other keywords. But anyhow, uh, this was a yard sale find. I paid one dollar for this. It was uh, it was pretty dirty uh, and used when I found it. But uh, I'm very familiar with this style of vintage '90s hat, um, and it's the pro line. And with the the designs here with it, um, I forget exactly what it is called, but there's a there's there's like a shockwave one, then there's the lightning one, and then there's this one. They were very very popular in the '90s. I'm kind of a '80s '90s kid, so uh, I was got pretty excited when I saw this hat at that sale. And uh, after looking at it, I was pretty sure I could clean it up. Uh, I threw it in the dishwasher, um, and then. When I got it out, I uh, that had cleaned it up pretty good, and then I stuffed it with some old T-shirts uh, to kind of reform it. And then you'll see up on the front here, like on the top two, uh, the top sides of the corner of the hat, um, it kind of deflated a little bit in there. But when you do do it, and you stuff it with the shirts in order to get those little pockets up front to really get it back to its shape. You want to stuff uh, grocery bags, the little plastic gro grocery bags, the real thin ones, and it'll fill in those pockets pretty good. Um, and then right when it's uh, it's almost dry, it's just a little bit damp, I spray it with uh, spray starch. It's the starch that uh, you use when you're ironing your clothes and it gives it a nice crisp like new feel so I brought this this hat back to luster pretty good I think I mean um, I think it lost its form a little bit when it was uh, put into its tote and stored uh, it did take a while to sell it, it, I think it was listed back in March we missed football season it is the beginning of football season now we're in week four um, and I've been getting a ton of traffic on it in the last few weeks. You know, people want to know what's the lowest you'll take for it type of thing. Um, and I, I just kind of ignored most of it. I mean, I, I did tell some people that I would take like 15, but they were like 15 free shipping. And I was like, well, if I did free shipping, basically. I mean, I didn't tell them that. But if I did free shipping um, on this after, you know, boxing it up to try to keep it form, you end up making $7 on it. So, um Somebody came in um, before I could even respond to the, the other guy, one of the other ones, and bought it for $17.61, and I have $1 invested into it. Next up, uh, this is a an older snapback Allen socket. Um, the Allen is the thin, narrow part up front, just like an Allen wrench, and then it uh, the socket up tight up top. Um, they all have model numbers on them. You can see it right here is FA-5A. Pretty much every snap-on tool has a model number on it, and it makes it really easy for them to look up. This came out of a storage locker. Uh, I had found a, a small lunchbox size toolbox in the storage locker, and it was just full of uh, old snap-on uh, snap and uh, Matco uh, sockets. And uh, this one sold for $12.43, and that is roughly what all of them sold for. There was probably 40 of them in there. And then I sold the little toolbox that was about what that was lunchbox size, which was also snap on. I sold that for about 50 bucks. Um, and I had paid $200 for the entire locker, and this was just one little thing that was in there. It was a fairly decent locker. It's always a decent locker when you find snap on in there. Snap on anything. That's definitely a bolo. Snap on. 
Next up, we have a 2001 Harry Potter Ron Weasley uh, Christmas ornament. This is new in the box. And this is the original um, Harry Potter movie when they, when they started first coming out in 2001. So it's, it's getting up there in age, uh, definitely collectible. This is a consignment deal with a friend of mine. Um, he runs like a big lot type thing, like yard sale on, on like an acre of land. And I'll give him some of my like uh, more industrial materials type, type stuff that I'll get out of stores, lockers. And we can sell that there. And then he gives me this smaller stuff that's, uh, that's easier to ship. And we do a 50-50 split on things after um, PayPal and eBay fees. I don't typically take a whole lot of the real small stuff like that in the $30 range. or, or it's, it's typically 50 and above that I get from him. Um, just because I got enough of my own stuff to list. But he gave me two totes, large totes full of this Harry Potter collectible stuff. And I believe there was three of the of this one here. So this was a, cl a quantity list, which was actually about a $90 list since there was three of them. But this one sold within the first week. So Next up, we have a Vintage Pioneer amplifier. It is model SR202W. Let's see if we can get a closer look at this. There we go. It was in really good shape for its age. And anytime I see vintage electronics, I get excited. I love vintage electronics. They sell super well and they can sell super high. Um, Pioneer is definitely one that I get a little extra excited about because it is a great brand. For me, it's definitely been a great brand. brand. This, took, um, uh, this took two or three months to sell. Um, uh, we, we probably started out initially at about a hundred bucks, and they ended up selling. And we bump our price. I bump, I bump my prices down ten percent every month, um, unless it's really getting to be something that I'm tired of looking at and dealing with. Then I'll bump it down a lot faster. But that's typically my method. Method to it is uh, I'll list something, um, and uh, I'll, I'll list something at the the going rate, uh, average price to. Uh, slightly above average price and I will always run a 20% off sale on everything. Uh, this one didn't have it because I forgot to renew the sale so sales slowed down for me for about a week because I had forgotten to renew my sale. But I'll, I'll, I run a legit 20% off sale at all times. But this one sold for $72.81. Got it out of a storage locker so I probably have less than a dollar into it. This is a vintage Casio Men's Melody Alarm LCD digital watch. Um, this is, it was not working. I, I noticed that the, the ones that were working were selling for about $100. Uh, I changed the battery on it. I could not get it to work. Uh, I don't know if there's a reset button. Uh, I couldn't find anything on YouTube or researching this model, but it was definitely a popular model. So I figured uh, I'd make at least 20 bucks on it, auction style, and that's what I listed it for initially was $19.99 auction style. And surprisingly, for parts and repair, it sold for $51. And uh, the band was actually even roached out and dry and cracking, and I noted it in the description, but it sold, still sold for 51 bucks. So got this out of a storage locker, so like I said, pretty much anything I get out of a storage locker, I probably have like a quarter into it because you get a lot of stuff out of lockers. This is a pair of uh, Tactical 511 pants, cargo pants. Uh, Tac 511 is a bolo brand that is definitely something you want to look out for. But I've noticed in the thrift stores that it is getting a little on the pricey side. These ones were listed for or tagged for seven dollars at uh, the Goodwill. Uh, luckily, I got I, I found these on the half price Saturday that they do down here locally, and I was able to get them for three dollars and fifty cents. I listed these just a couple days ago, and they sold for full price at twenty two dollars and seventy seven cents. Um, if, if any of you haven't re realized but that uh, eBay is making you uh, listings at full price for the first 14 days before they will let your sales go into effect. 
So this should have had the 20% off sale, uh, and I would have had it on there, um, but eBay didn't let me for 14 days. So uh, well, I'll take the 2277 though. And on all this stuff, um, I do not do free shipping. The buyers pay for all, all shipping on pretty much 99% of the items that I sell. Uh, so this is a Benico uh, rotisserie drive motor. It is for like a, like a chicken rotisserie, you know, it slowly rotates and everything like that. I've actually found a handful of these things and they, they do sell well, these rotisserie motors. And this is about the going price that I get for them for about $20. Um, and I found this one at our local bins and for textiles they charge us 89 cents a pound. Uh, and that's what this, uh, this is in the textile um, area or I'm, 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 the words not coming to me but anyhow um, I it was about two pounds maybe in three pounds so I, uh, I probably have about two dollars maybe two dollars change invested into it it was listed for probably two and a half months and I shipped it uh, in a padded flat in a padded flat just kind of doubled it up uh, this is a vintage Woolrich Sportsman shirt. This is a uh, Woolrich is is still a good brand. Uh, if any of you are f uh, familiar with Woolrich, it's kind of died off. I used to get like about forty bucks for these types of shirts. Uh, we're definitely not getting that anymore. I might be able to get forty bucks for a jacket, uh, but you used to get sixty for the jackets or fifty for the jackets. Woolrich is still a good brand. I definitely recommend Woolrich. Uh, but don't pay up for it. Uh, if you find something like this, a couple bucks maybe, because um, this is about what you're going to get for it, $16.15. And they are made of wool, so they're heavy. Um, so if you're doing free shipping, definitely even be even more cautious about it because you're going to have to pay for the, high, the heavier shipment. But we had this listed. This probably was listed for about a month. I believe I got this at the, our bins, so I paid... $1.79 a pound is the cost of our closing, clothing at our local bins, so I probably paid uh, about $3 for it. This uh, I've had for a very long time. This one it was probably listed for about a year now. Um, it, and probably because it's a fitted hat, and fitted hats don't do as well as snapback hats and the content of it. Callaway is a good brand, you know, Callaway does, you know, well enough. It, it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna go super high, but what really killed it, I think, is this right here, is the Diablo. This was a brand of golf club that they came out with for a while, and it wasn't their higher-end golf clubs. It, was, it wasn't even their mid-range golf clubs. It was definitely one of their cheaper ones, and it didn't do great. So, um, this was this is something that I found in a lot of hats in a storage locker, and this is kind of how the storage locker business is. Uh, I thought I would get a little bit more for this. Obviously, it was listed for a year, um, but uh, that's just the name of the game with storage lockers. You're going to get a lot of stuff, and you're going to get a lot of stuff that's not great. It's not like picking, where you can kind of pick and choose, you know, all the little nuggets out of you know everything else. Storage lockers, you got to try to make the best of what you got and and you're gonna have to sit on a lot of stuff you know a lot of, a lot of storage locker guys are, are long tail sellers you know long tail be, meaning it's it's some of some of the stuff takes a long time to sell um but i mean if you think about it they paid five dollars and fifteen cents for shipping along with six dollars and twenty eight cents so they paid you know over eleven dollars for this hat which you know isn't bad that's just unfortunately i don't get the whole eleven dollars but it sold for $6.28 after being listed for a year. But I, like I said, it's a storage locker, so I probably have about 25 cents into it. This is another storage locker find. This is a vintage 90s St. John's Bay uh, black diamond sweater. Definitely 90s. It's got a cool 90s pattern to it. Uh, St. John's Bay is not a brand that I would typically sell. St. John's is a good women's clothing brand. Um, if you can find anything that says St. John's, uh, definitely get a hold of that. That is a uh, is a higher end designer uh, brand, and uh, yeah, look it up real quick. If you're not you know on your phone watching this video, 
uh, look up just St. John's Women's Clothing. You'll be surprised. It's uh, it's definitely a great brand, but uh, St. John's Bay, I would stay clear of. The only reason why I listed this one is because it was older and it had that funky 90s look to it. Um, this was listed for a long time as well. We must have had it high when we initially listed it uh, because this was probably listed for about nine months or maybe even longer, and it still sold for $20.48. And Storage Locker Finds sold about a quarter into it. This is a London Fog trench coat, tan with a liner, men's size 42. This I got at Savers. It's a local thrift store here in Arizona. Uh, and I picked this up. I don't typically pick up London Fog. Uh, I might pick it up if it's something like camel or wool or something a little nicer than just that, your, your basic uh, trench coat like this. It's a nice trench coat. It was in really good condition. But the only reason why I picked it up is because uh, it was a yellow tag sell at our local savers and everything yellow tag was only two dollars so that was a good find for me and it did not sell for forty dollars and seventy one cents a uh, buyer had contacted me and told me that they would pay thirty five dollars plus shipping and i had this for a long time i've had this since the end of last winter so it's a good seven months maybe even eight months. Um, I mean, it is the time that it would sell, but the fact that it was in my warehouse for as long as it was, I wanted it gone. Uh, it went to New York. I was able to fit into a medium flat rate box. So 35 bucks, $2 invested. I still made $10, $15 off of it. So there's that. Next up, we have, um, this is a Royal Dalton. There's a lot of Royal Dalton out there, uh, but Royal Dalton is good. The figures are, are good. Some of the dishware is better than others. This one, I have a large, large set of the stuff that I got out of a storage locker, and uh, this is just one piece of probably 200 pieces that I got. Um, they haven't sold for a while. Initially, when we, sold, like, we listed them all, uh, we sold probably 50 pieces of it right off the bat. And then it really slowed down. I went back in and I tinkered with the title a little bit. And this one sold a couple days later after not a single piece selling for probably six months. So going back and tinkering with your titles and your pricing, even if you raise the price, just do something with it. If it's, if it's, I, I swear there is, people say that there's not, but I think there is. There is definitely an eBay purgatory. So every once in a while, if you feel like you got a good item and it is in eBay purgatory, go bring it back up, tinker it up a little bit, and uh, get it out of purgatory, or at least try to. Um, so this one took a long time to sell. Uh, I, I still would recommend Royal Dalton, uh, but look it up first because there's a lot of different kinds of Royal Dalton out there. So I have probably less than a quarter into this, and it sold for $14.14. This was, this was listed for a long time, too. Um, this I thought would do so much better. There is kind of some fuzzies down on the bottom of, the, the bottom of it, but it is a very old beanie. Um, it's got good content with the Budweiser. I thought it had cool colors with the orange and the black, kind of... Uh, uh, Chicago Bears colors, <coughs> but definitely vintage, vintage -y, you know, typically classic Budweiser, vintage Budweiser stuff does really well. I think this one got caught in purgatory for a little bit because I recently tinkered it up a little bit and uh, it sold uh, probably within three weeks of me um, uh, adjusting the title and the pricing a little bit, but I think I initially had this listed for $20.00. And uh, and that's what the comps said when I when I when I initially listed it, and it was probably a year ago, um, bumping it down 10% each month, um, and then a little bit more when I kind of relisted it a little bit, and it sold for six dollars and forty six cents. A uh, little disappointing, but oh well. I'm still not going to stay away from vintage Budweiser. I still recommend anybody to look out for it. So this I listed just a few days ago. Um, this is a lot of new with tags, uh, golf shirts, 
and this is not how it's sold though. Uh, I've had all four of these shirts listed individually uh, for a very long time and I didn't get any hits on them. I had a lot more at one point and some of the others sold. These ones were just hanging around which I'm surprised because kind of the, the, the neon green one and the orange one I thought were like big bright appealing colors. Uh, but I guess St. John, St. Andrews probably isn't the most appealing brand, the pot, you know, maybe. But uh, these did not sell. Uh, so I bundled them all together and I figured they would sell this way. Uh, somebody messaged me and they said that they just wanted the orange one and they'd be willing to pay me $15, which is uh, the, a higher average price if you averaged out all four. So, yeah. And, um, I mean, all of them were listed for a very long time. Uh, that's why I bundled them together because I wanted to move them. So he wanted just the one. I went back in. I adjusted. I sent him. I replied the message with an offer at 15. And then I went back into the listing and switched the shipping to first class at 10 ounces. And he bought just the orange one for $15. And he still paid the shipping. And I will go back and I will relist the other three less than a week to sell. So I pick up a lot of these home uh, wireless phones uh, because I get them at our local bins for really cheap and typically I can find multiples of the same model. You don't get a lot, a lot of money for them, but if I can find five of the same model and they're all basically in the same condition uh, and you can sell them for 10 bucks a piece, that's one listing, quantity five. So you got a $50 listing right there, and these things weigh less than a pound with the, the AC adapter, the cradle base, and the phone. So textile, the electronics at our bins are $0.89 cents a pound, so I'm paying less than a dollar for them. So um, I would not recommend picking up General Electric or GE. It is not uh, the best quality and they do not sell super fast. This was just part of a bundle of things that I got. I probably grabbed it because it was a bird's nest or a rat's nest full of wires and cables and AC adapters like you get at the bins and I don't have a lot of time to just unwind them there so I'll just throw them in the cart like the whole rat's nest and then I'll bring it home and I'll untangle it there and, and you know uh, rubber band wrap each individual one and set it all it's just the process of it all um some brands definitely to look out for or other brands to not look out for i would say like vtech uniden vtech uniden ge um these are all like the lower end ones that you got you do have some better ones though uh your panasonics your at&t's your sony's those are definitely ones that you want to look out for uh, none of them sell fast, but some of them do sell for a little bit more, being those AT&Ts and those Panasonics and those Sonys. But this one was probably listed for um, three or four months, and it sold for $9.22. Um, Hager um, is, a, is a mall brand. And it's, a, it's a slightly ex expensive mall brand. It's not super high-end. But the resale value of it is not great. Uh, you can tell by the background in this picture that uh, this has been listed for a long time because that is our old setup, one of our old setups. Uh, and this was a storage locker type deal, and that's the only reason why it's listed. I thought it might do a little bit better because it's got the cool plaid design to it. Um, but I'm just now noticing something on it, and it probably will, might be part of why it didn't sell us that this is not a men's. A size 21 that is small so that is not a men's so hopefully this doesn't get returned hopefully they notice that and you know they know their blazers um, a little bit better than one of my previous listers does because that was a that was a mistake but it happens um, I mean I, I don't see how they wouldn't look at the size uh, it's definitely a mistake on our part but anyhow Came out of a storage locker, so less than a quarter invested. Um, was listed for uh, nine months to a year, and uh, it sold for $9.71. Uh, 
Uh, I don't I'd recommend Hagger. Like I said, it was a storage locker thing, so it was kind of one of those things where I can either donate it, try to sell it at a yard sale or swap meet for a dollar, or see what I can get out of out of it on eBay. And I thought that the the pattern would sell it, but that you know, almost ten bucks, not too bad. This is a Oakland Raiders uh, graphic T-shirt. It's a men's size large. Uh, this is a uh, the photo has our old background, so this is definitely a long, long time listing. Uh, this is a storage locker find. I thought this was do would do a little bit better, seeing as how uh, the Raiders are in uh, Vegas now. Yeah, they're in Vegas now. They're not in Oakland anymore. So I thought the Oakland stuff would start doing a little bit better. Um, plus it's a graphic tee, um, you know, I guess it didn't do bad, you know, they paid, you know, $5.15 shipping and then seven thirty one on top of that. So they did, they did pay over $10 for it in total. Um, so, uh, if this was a vintage, uh, tee, uh, it would have done better, I believe. Uh, so I do recommend these type of things, but, uh, I, I don't, I don't recommend paying any more than anything more than a dollar for them. Uh, I think this is the low end of what they would sell for seven dollars and thirty one cents. I think they'll sell more so within the ten to fifteen dollar range. Okay, so this is a Sony video DVD VHS uh, DVD combo remote. Um, I pick up pretty much every remote I find. Um, the only ones I would say to not pick up or anything that says like direct TV or our cable company is Cox Cable. I don't know if uh, that's uh, that's national or anything like that, but that's ours. And then you get your like Dish Network ones and anything that is a local cable or satellite company or anything like that where there's they're just mass produced and you can basically call them and and tell them you need another one and tell them that their remote is not working and they'll just send you one for free um, look look for these other ones this one like says Sony on it or Pioneer or Panasonic um, uh, <coughs> I've actually sold this particular remote many many times because uh, it is it is to a DVD VHS combo so your market is a little broader, broader on this one in particular because you're not just selling to the people that are going to use it you're selling it to other resellers because uh, DVD VHS combos do really well and they do a lot better if you have the remote so uh, this was listed for a couple months and it sold for eight dollars and twenty five cents I probably have fifty cents or less invested into it um, my buddy that I, I was telling you about do I, I do a lot of consignments with and he gets a lot of lockers. He knows that I sell remotes and he typically keeps them to the side for me and I'll buy boxes of them from him for 50 cents a piece as long as I just buy them all because he can't, he doesn't have any luck selling them where he's at. And uh, this is definitely one of the lower end of, of the price of these sell for. I've sold remotes for uh, um, up to $100 before. Uh, some of the, the really great ones that you want to look out for or anything that's uh, Bose or anything that's a receiver remote for like uh, audio system receivers uh, that and uh, some of them are set up to like control like a whole household like uh, locking doors turning on lights opening and closing blinds uh, and uh, those ones are really expensive you can sometimes get a couple hundred dollars for those This is an Apple Airport Express base station original. Um, so this I got from a local auction, uh, not a storage locker, a storage locker auction, but a local auction. And uh, it's a company that goes in and remodels all um, tech systems for um, other, you know, tech companies and, and whatnot. And they um, uh, they'll pull out all the a tech equipment and they'll put it in a they'll put it in big bins um, like laundry bins and they'll just auction it all off and tip 99% of the people there are just buying the, the bin of, of wire and whatnot 
and uh, just to take it to the scrapyard and recycle it. They can typically double your money really quick doing that. Not me though. I go in and I pull out each and single charger, adapter, cord. I lot them up together. I put them with uh, like models and I'll sell them by the bundle or I'll sell them individually if it's something like this or or like a uh, computer charger or anything like that. Um, and I do a lot better. You can buy one of those bins for 150 bucks and take it down to the recycle yard and get 300. It's a good way to just double your money real quick. Or I put about a half a day's work into it and I'll turn my 150 into about 1500. And they're really easy to list. Super easy. I probably had uh, less than a quarter invested into that last uh, cord. That, that's pretty much. Yeah, that's what it basically comes down to after going through a whole bin of those cords. They're basically about a quarter, quarter to 50 cents a piece. So these are a pair of Keens. This wasn't a great buy for me. Um, I'll definitely recommend Keen. Keen is a great brand. Uh, this, isn't, this isn't the most appealing style. Um, there's some yellowing going on around the toe area, if you can see. And it actually isn't that bad. I think the photos made it look worse. Um, and uh, I bought these a while back, and I think I paid too much for them. I believe I paid $10 for them. Um, wasn't a good buy for me. Um, listed for a long time. I just got, you know, I was real excited about Keens back then. They were selling super well for me at the time. They still do sell really well, um, but I, I should have looked into this model a little bit better because this model didn't sell great for me. And this is basically what that model sells for. Um, it wasn't back then, but I think we started out too high, and we just didn't lower the price fast enough, and uh, got a little bit behind on the what the market was trending for. But they sold. Um, took a little while. It was my own fault for uh, listing too high, I believe. Uh, they sold for seventeen dollars and sixty cents. Still recommend Keens. Just don't overpay for them and don't overprice them, like I did. So this is another AC adapter. Um, I believe I got this one at the bins, uh, so it weighs about two ounces, so I probably paid, I don't know, 10 cents for it. Uh, Black & Tucker does really well, or any other type of tool charger. This uh, probably plugged into a charging cradle or base or something like that. Uh, but these things sell for pretty well for me, and I actually find them quite a bit. But if you find like Black & Decker Craftsman, Milwaukee, Royobi, Dewalt, anything like that, that uh, charges these um, these hand power tools, um, and you can get them dirt cheap, you know, for for change, or if you can get like the full charger uh, for something like a Milwaukee or a Dewalt or something like that, you can pay a few bucks for them because you're probably going to get about the twenty dollar range for those. But this one, this was for a couple months. Um, <coughs> sold for six dollars and sixty eight six dollars and sixty six cents um and uh probably took me about three minutes to list literally probably three minutes not the best picture i probably took this picture from my couch watching tv you can tell that it's my coffee table and the lighting is not great this is a storage locker find this is a, a old like smartphone i don't even know what the the brand is i'm not even familiar with the brand uh, this is was listed for quite a while. Um, uh, typically, stuff like this I'll sell on a lot of cell phones, like the off-brand ones or older ones that aren't like that appealing. You still can sell older sell older cell phones. Um, the old flip ones actually do halfway decent. You know, you can make uh, fifteen to twenty-five dollars for some of the old flip ones. Um, this one I probably would re would have rethought listing, but I mean, uh, it took I think four or five months to sell. It sold for $13.97. Uh, so not bad. I mean, it's okay. But um, I'm trying to get uh, more toward the $25 and above because uh, I don't do storage lockers anymore, so I don't have to kind of deal with a lot of these long tail type things. So if you are dealing in the storage locker business, yeah, go ahead and list it. You know, I, I made roughly $14 off of it. It took a little while, but it doesn't take up a lot of space. 
And last but definitely not least, we have a pair of Oakley sunglasses. These were in really good condition, and these are actually a pair of Oakleys that I bought for myself. Uh, I went in to go get some new, I wear prescription sunglasses and prescription glasses, and I went in to go get some new glasses, and I like Oakleys because I, I used to be a firefighter, and I feel like firefighters and cops and um, you know federal agents and law enforcement, civil servants, we all kind of like... It seems like we all wear Oakleys. It all has like, like I wasn't, a, I mean, I wasn't a police officer. I was a firefighter, but I, I swear, like we all kind of, we all kind of look like cops. Um, but anyhow, um, I got these and uh, I had gone to go get some new scripted Oakleys and they wanted like two hundred and twenty five dollars for these particular ones which i i just i can't stomach doing that not in the business that i'm in and not knowing ebay the way i know i couldn't spend that much money for it so i took a little picture of the pair that i liked went back home and searched on ebay and i found them and i ordered them and they arrived and they looked amazing the only thing was they were huge and i'm not a very big guy uh, I definitely have like a narrow face, a narrow head, um, and these these were really really big on me, so I couldn't keep them. Uh, but I found them for like twenty five bucks online in great condition. Um, so I talked to my wife about it. I said no big deal. Um, I was just you know she wanted me to return them to the guy on eBay that she got them from. The the size wasn't listed. But then again, I didn't ask. I should have looked. I just thought this model was all the same size. Um, so it was my fault. I should have I should have at least asked. I know what size glasses I wear. So anyway, I only paid 25 bucks for them, which I knew was a great deal because uh, I got them auction style. And sometimes when you do auction, you get burned. Uh, I don't know if that's what they expected to sell them for, but that's what I, what I got them for. So I, I just told my wife, you know, no big. I'll relist them. We should uh, should be able to make at least 50 bucks off of them, which, uh, you know, that's more than breaking even. And I listed them. It took about two weeks to sell, and we sold them for $55.82. So that's it for for my sold video today. It was actually my first sold video, so I hope I did well. I hope uh, some of you out there were able to learn something or you were at least entertained by it. Um, I know I like to listen to these videos sometimes when I'm doing my listing. Um, so if... if if you learned something, if you enjoyed it, uh, hit the hit the thumbs up button. I definitely appreciate that. It helps me, um, and and encourage definitely encourages to make uh, more newer and often content. Um, uh, I'll definitely will be coming out with more content. Um, I'm gonna do, try to do at least one video a week. Uh, so if if you're interested in seeing more, definitely subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button, and I appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, thanks a lot, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.